Hello everybody, welcome back to the Young Grower. So last year we did our allotment tours where we took you around and showed you everything we're growing, what varieties and anything that had changed over the month. We decided we're going to bring them back after they were so popular last year. So from this month onwards until the end of the season, I'll be doing a monthly tour of our urban allotment farm. It is split between two plots, so it'll be a one part and a two parter. First part this month is the chicken orchard and let's go and have a look around and show you what things we've got growing. But before we do get started, I will point out the places in the middle of like being transformed still. We've decided we're going to get a polytunnel, so this side looks a bit like a building site. Behind me looks good. Yeah, I'll just show you. Let's go. So it's Thursday, the 28th of May today. And as you can see, the place is full of life. Lots of things grow in. So not much has changed from last time. I still can't decide where to start. Here we have Japanese onions. Yeah, same shade of yellow. I decided to staple the tags to the front. Some of them have started to go to seed, but we just broke the seed heads off and there's little. Either way, we're going to have onions, even if they're greens or... Right, you know, that, there's one right there. Pinch that off. Well, some are really big and they're really starting to fatten up and we are feeding them once a week with the nettle and comfrey tea. Over there is a flower bed but we'll go down and look at that after. As you can tell we are growing a lot of onions this year. This is because we are trying to become self-sufficient in onions. Over there is some fork, fork hoard chard. Um, it's got a sweet stem, it's from real seeds. I believe I pronounced the name right. If not, it's on the screen anyway. We've had some brambles come up and we've got to get the gloves and get them out because this place used to be well, it was all covered in brambles last year. So just a couple out of what there was is really good. And over here, we have more onions and again, go into seeds. The name of this one has gone. I believe they are Red Cross. Never grown this variety before. I was meant to get some Red Baron to grow and I just didn't get them. They did really well last year and hardly any of them went to seed. But they are looking very good. And last year when I snapped them off earlier, they seemed to just bulk up the bulbs and they're fine. May not store as well, but they're still fine. Then here we have shallots. And the variety, I'm not too sure. Yeah, I've not tagged them. <laughs> and then here is a, a solo monobulb of elephant garlic that I got sent to me by moderators on Allotment Bible. And then we have some turnips I planted. And there's some narcissiums at the back, if I pronounce that right. Some more shallots, and then there's another poppy coming up over there as well oh, and there's some cauliflower I planted in between the shallots so hopefully when we harvest the shallots then the cauliflower can get big I'm going to try and move through everything as fast as I can just so I can show you everything at the beginning of the stage before everything starts to really grow so here we have planted a crown prince it's actually in an old water tank I think what used to be in a loft somewhere drilled some holes in it put some canes so it encourages it up to the top of the shed and it'll grow over the shed that's the plan we just put the manure what we picked up a couple of weeks ago is well rotted that is some flower in there too it's a giant russian and then here we have another squash with some marigolds this is a boston squash and these were just spare plants i had they were meant to be going to the new family plot that we took on but with everything going on at the moment We've decided just to focus on this place, so everything's getting planted here and we're giving lots of plants away. And here we have the aubergine trio. I'm not going to say too much about that. There is a video on the page if you want to watch it. But the one thing I will say is the Czech early has flowered, so it's really enjoying being out here. So now we will go into the greenhouse and have a look. We've just took the seed starting bench out. This has been the nursery, this plot. Um, starting all the plants for everywhere 
with so many plants I'm just going to have a quick jump through them I'm not going to tell you too much over the next couple of months as they grow I will tell you more about the varieties and why I've chosen those varieties I have lots of heritage and heirloom veg this year it has become a real passion of mine and I can't wait to share all those stories with you but for now we'll just have a quick look and see how things are growing right in here today 33.3 that's now <laughs> so we're going to be very quick so at the back here we have some very depressed chilies and they got a little bit neglected since I gave the other ones to Rahana I personally don't like chilies so I've not been too motivated to look after them I those hid away there's lots of new growth so they're coming back to life and they will be perfect to find if anything it shows you that neglected plants do come back perfect then here we have a mixture of aubergines and some more chilies then here we have peppers and these are sweet peppers and the beasts uh -oh, I can't these are my babies if you can tell look at them compared to the chilies we have I have really looked after them these are paprika and yeah I need to get them potted that's the one reason why we've took that out so yeah and one side full of peppers and then a few little bobs mixed and matched and at each end there's going to be a Kajari melon and over here we have the giant tomatoes I potted these on about a week maybe two ago and they're doing really well decided to put them in these deep root trainer things the old vases just an experiment and I've potted one on normally it's doing really well and it's going to be going in a big pot yeah just gonna have a play around with them this year and that is a tomato that I got given to me by my plot neighbour over there. And there's a crystal lemon cucumber there, a crystal apple cucumber, and there's a wyatoma, I believe it, what? I can't pronounce it, I'm not good at pronouncing some things. Yeah, it's from real seeds. Got some of them planted outside. And then there's two loafers one is going to be planted outside and another one is going to be planted in a greenhouse or poly it's going to be planted somewhere inside haven't decided that yet then we have some pear drop tomatoes and then here are i believe they're crystal lemon cucumbers that i didn't label that will just get planted somewhere over the next few months you will notice i'm a bit of a free spirit when it comes to planting I like to start all the plants that I know I want and I like to do extra so I can give stuff away and then I just plant things where I feel I want to plant them at the time I've got knowledge over the last year of how big certain plants get sometimes they get bigger than I expect but it's all part of the learning and I find the more you plant in one bed it brings a diverse range of bugs and it's one of the reasons why I love doing organic and it's less work. Got some bright light child up there that looks very neglected. Now I need to pot on. And we have some calendula, only a few of them come up. And these are dahlia cuttings. I did actually record a video for this, but I forgot to click record on the main part. Yeah, so that hasn't happened. And then over there are some more jiffy pellets to start off my next lot of brassicas so I'm going to do some more kohlrabi and some more kale and there are the calendula drying that we will use to make some calendula salve and I will do a video on how to make that later in the season and once I have enough of the flowers dried to make some have a drink So then outside the greenhouse, this is a bit of my like workstation where I take cuttings and got some plants that I've salvaged from hedges and places and plants that I've split from mine. These are all geums down here and there's some herbs there. My plant neighbor brought up to give to the chickens, but there's lots of roots. So I split it, repotted two of them and cut the greens off for the chickens and here we have our leeks. This was a bit of an experiment this year. 
it's, yeah there's a lot of dead foliage but look, they are looking good and they are quite thick as well I just got two packs of muscle breliques sprinkled them in this tray one of the trays has holes in the other one doesn't yeah um, normally I multi sell my leeks so I thought I'd try this way and then we'll dunk them in water let all the soil come off separate the roots and then plant them that way that's the plan but it's a bit of an experiment this year so we'll see how that goes solid there that I did for the chickens so I'm going to give that to them very soon we'll head down that way and I'll show you that in a sec but before we go let's just have a quick look here this is a bit of a building mess at the moment beautiful not beautiful <laughs> but we have all our manure and compost bags and some air pots there the tulips and then we brought this out of there today like i mentioned and we have holy basil we have brussels sprouts these are ever so special and groganers then we have outdoor melons it's called outdoor wonder and these are the kajari melons they've gone a bit yellow i've given them a good feed today i left them on the top shelf not realizing so much going on you do end up forgetting things i'm not the only one that does it we all do it then here we have some more lemon cucumbers i got a bit carried away but they can be grown outside so a lot's going to be planted down the bottom plot but i'll show you where and here we have mammoth basil and this is from real seeds oh, it's beautiful and it gets that big that one leaf can cover a tomato slice apparently in a sandwich i don't eat tomatoes in a sandwich but that does sound awesome um i was about to say we're missing some basil <laughs> but it's down here we have lots of different basils this year we have cinnamon basil and then we have finissimo yeah that basil and all our basils from real seeds this year and I haven't done anything special to grow them I've just put them in a lining soil slightly covered them over watered them pricked them out and I'd like to put a few plants in a pot I'm a multi sower and yeah well, that is all them down there there is a compost area being built the video is being made for that so you will see more about that once it's done now let's head down that way what we do i haven't shown you the plants on this side so down here are they were the tete-a-tete -tete daffodils early in the year and they died back so i decided to sprinkle some marigold seeds on the top these are my own saved seeds and then i'll prick them out later on and leave some in there to flower and this is a salvia hot lips, one of the cuttings I took earlier in the year. So here we have some basil, some calendula that is self-seeded, and a marigold. Some more marigolds, <laughs> another self-seeded calendula. And I planted one of them there. And I planted a few of them like around the plot. And then here we have one of the mammoth basils. And as you can see, they're getting a lot bigger. And I've planted a cherry pear drop tomato with a little wigwam in between and then some I think this is holy basil next to it and some other marigolds in here in this pot I am leaving this to go to seed it self seeded just over there so I dug it up I forgot the name I will try to put it on the screen but it's used as a green manure but the flowers are beautiful so I would like some to actually add to the flower bed as the wildlife loved it and over here we've planted a bit of a, a random combination so we have another crown prince and some basil and i've just put this down here out of the way i thought i actually lost it the other ones up over there they're cucamelons angry cucumbers i like to call them and the proper name if i've spelled it right is melophine melophenia something like that and then next to it we have a sibley squash and again these were spare plants so i thought i would try and train them up over the chicken run the roof's not been done yet because of lockdown and stuff so i thought 
they're gonna die if I don't plant them. Let's put some manure into the bottom and plant them. But it seems to be doing good. Lots of new flowers and yeah. Then we have a mixture of dahlias here that need to be planted up. Most of them I've planted over there, what I'll show you in a moment. And a mixture of flowers, some petunias and calendula. Lobelia, I think, underneath. And then there's the same again for that one. Then we're going to walk down Potato Alley. I've always wanted somewhere that I can call Potato Alley. And this has become it. So we have lots of heritage and heirloom potatoes. We did a video earlier in the season planting these. So if you're curious to know what we're growing, go over there. There's multiple colours. There's, yeah, a big range. And I do show you the colour of the potatoes in it. Most of them are grown in 30 litre bucket and they're 36 litre polypots. And this here was our tile pond that has currently been dismantled because it's getting moved to the back because of the poly tunnel. And then we have our tile wall. And in this we have some flowers planted there. Then we have giant Swiss peas. They are seeds I saved myself last year and they are doing really well and it's encouraged me to try and save as many more seeds as I can this year because it's free food. That's absolutely brilliant. And next to it we have runner beans and again these are seeds I've saved myself and I've planted some cosmos in there so hopefully that will fill out the bottom and then yeah it will all go up. Planted about two to three plants. Paracane, I've got good results for that last year so I'm doing it again. Still got stuff to plant in that one. I may do the Greek gigantic runner beans, I don't know. We'll find something to go in there. And then there we have a mixture of flowers and weeds. Cosmos, there was some bluebells and I believe there's some coriander coming up over here as well. And there's coriander all in here. I think coriander is beautiful to look at. So I still put a lot of it as the flower as well. I'll harvest the seeds. The bag was from Marshalls and I got sent some garlic from the same person who I got the mono elephant bulb from and it was a little bit late going in but she offered me to send it and I thought why not I've got this bag to use and it's doing really well one good thing it's up here right from all the others so there's no rust or anything on it and then we have a self-seeded tree spinach what it's brilliant. I'd like that to self-seed more like it does on my Hannah's plot because it's free food for the chickens. And here is a blueberry. I got this plant for $3.99. I had to pay postage. And um, there's another one over there. Uh, it's the first year it's fruited. But yeah, I don't eat them, but I want them for a jam. I really want to make blueberry jam for my mum. More potatoes. These are all the same varieties of these. Didn't record these. But we decided we would plant some in these just to see what the harvest is like compared to the big ones. We have more of the heritage and heirloom potatoes behind there in the buckets. They were originally all up here but they had to be rehomed because of the polytunnel. And next to it we have our temporary pond set up. We've got the prefab pond that was in the tyre. We put that there and also set up some other temporary ponds with the pond plants in. Fox gloves and all my little ferns are repotted, uh, hid under there. I've got an obsession with ferns. And it's a bit of a mess over here. Again, it's in the middle of work being done. So we're gonna clear out all these big rocks and there's a lot of glass in there. This is gonna be where the sweet potatoes grown. We've got to fix up that bit. But eventually this will be fenced in the chicken enclosure and it will become the chicken greenhouse so in the summer I will use it to grow stuff and make sure I keep the door closed, I'll try to anyway. And then in the winter it will be for them, they can go in, it will be like a giant dust bath, they can dig, they can poop in there, they can fertilise the ground and then hopefully next year we can actually plant in the ground, that's the plan. And next to it we have all our runner beans as a mixture. We have our Greek giganti ones over here that are in pint cups that are doing really well. And then we have these ones that are sold in module trays. I did two per uh, sale and they're doing really well as well. 
and I've done this with all of them. These have actually got three, and these are the yard long beans. And behind the yard long beans, we have bolotto bean, bolotti, and I think they're fire tongue. And their seeds I saved as well last year. And then down here, I believe they're more scarlet emperor, and these are all going down on the bottom plot, what I will show you tomorrow. And over here, we have like the pathway. This is all going to be fenced off up to that post, and it's going to be the chicken enclosure. We're just waiting for the Harris fences to come. Then we have more potatoes there, and a lot more potatoes here as well. And over here, we have the ladies, what are doing really well, with the chicks inside. They're in their enclosure. And if you haven't yet watched any of our videos with the chicks or seen them hatching, I'd recommend going to find them on our Facebook page. It's amazing. But we have four ladies out here and then there's Lady B, I won't say her real name. And then she has her chicks. Let's go in quickly and see them. And there they are. There's six of them in there, they're doing really well. I think only two of them are males, what is absolutely brilliant. But let's go out there, we'll finish our last bit, talk about the plants we got there and the dahlias and show you the fruit trees and just talk about what's going to happen with this section over the next month. Here is a mixture of plants. We've got lots of flowers, there's dahlias, cucumbers, there's all sorts. I'm not going to show you too much about them. I'll tell you about that when I plant them out in the next allotment tour. These are dahlias we've been taking cuttings from that I showed you in the greenhouse. We have some more plants that I need to plant out. So the corn, we've brought that out of the greenhouse now. And then we have this big section that needs to be completely leveled for the polytunnel. So we're going to dig down there, put the pond in, bring it level, try to with that side. And actually line the pond this time. Someone who I've been following, um, she's done it. I still need to get a few more bits of advice, but it looks quite simple, I think. Sometimes I make things harder than they are. And here we have dahlias. All these dahlias I've grown from seeds. So let's quickly have a look and show you the different colors we've got growing at the moment. These in front of dwarf fruit trees. So there's a bucket behind and in front. And these are called Yankee Dandel Doodle. I think I will put the name on the screen anyway. I have three different varieties of dahlias growing from seed, but I mix the labels up. So it's a grow and see. Then we have another one over a flower there and there. This flower is not looking as good as it was. It was looking really good. There's another one coming up there. Then we have this beautiful one, absolutely gorgeous. And it's so satisfying knowing I've grown those from seed and um, they're just going to get better and better and I can save the tubers so they come back over time but because I don't know the varieties I'm going to wait for them to grow and label them so at least that way I know what they are and where I want them to go next year so all these fruit trees are in bud but we're going to have to maybe temporarily move them they did only get replanted again this year but this section needs to be completely re-leveled and that there's higher so i'm hoping maybe we can just dig around them and just leave like little mounds maybe little hills at the base but we'll see what happens and um, if we have to we have to the polytunnel at the moment is more important to me anyway because as long as i water them constantly yeah they may not do good for a year or two but they will be fine but hopefully we can avoid that and do it without it but it looks so much nicer when that polytunnel is there though and we have some flowers that are finishing off but i have planted some other bits in top of them i've got some pansies there's some california poppies more coming up there and then we've got some petunia petunia no and we've got some more bits over there as well so that should hopefully come to life even more over the next couple of weeks and there's two more things to show you before we finish up up on this plot 
we have our flower bed rockery area and this has just been plant and see what happens we've got our apple tree and then we have a globe artichoke back there with some poppies that i planted one little plant last year and um, yeah and then we have a geum what you can see the red flowers miss bradshaw i believe this one's called and you see there's some tulips there cut the stems back off i'm still feeding it so hopefully the bulbs get bigger for next year and then we have our can of worms wormery that i set up the video for this i'm actually going to be uploading tonight so by the time this video comes out it will already be out if you haven't watched it yet i would recommend going over to see it let's have a quick peek in there it's nearly been a week since i set it up oh look at the worms They're doing really good. They'll be settling into their home over the next couple of weeks and I'll slowly feed them and hopefully they'll start breeding and fill it up. I was just about to finish up and say that is everything to show you up here at the chicken orchard but then I forgot about these. So there we have some comfrey that I've left for the wildlife and then we have rhubarb in that tyre. This tyre is a hardy kiwi. It's one you can eat the skin and I thought it was dying because I brought it here and potted it from my home garden where it's coming back to life. Rahana noticed it, what is absolutely amazing. So hopefully that will cover that. And then next to it we have another flower planter and we have some lobelia and that is the Anna. Yeah, I planted it as one up by the greenhouse. Then this one here is Lady Savadon and it's another GM. I fell in love with the GMs and it's actually started to flower today perfect timing and it's absolutely beautiful i didn't think i had one of these i can't remember a yellow one last year i was sorting out the tire planter up there and the plant label next to it said same thing and i looked and it did have a little yellow flower so yeah i may have two of them but i think that is everything to show you up here on the chicken orchard i don't think i have missed anything if I have missed anything and there's something you've noticed I didn't show you, please comment and I will try and talk about it on the next video or I will try and make a separate video. So I think I have brought these videos back at the best time because so much is going to change over the next couple of months. It's going to be great to see how it does and how it all works out. I'm going to make lots more little videos throughout the season try to anyway I'm not going to promise anything if I get the time to make something I will I hope you enjoy this video if you've either watched it on Facebook YouTube or Instagram and if you have not yet subscribed liked or follow our channel please do um, you'll be notified when we upload videos and I would appreciate the support and I hope these videos can show and encourage you to grow something a bit different step out of your comfort zone or do something different from what the back of the seed packet says I do not follow instructions. That's one thing I do not do. I'm stubborn. I like to do things completely different. I always have, but it pays off. Not all the time. You find your own ways of doing things. You find what works for you, but you don't know unless you try. So don't forget to keep an eye out for part two. That'll be coming very soon. And we will have a look on the other plot and that is the kitchen garden. It is a no dig garden and there's so much going on down there and I can't wait to show you. So thank you all for watching and we'll see each other soon.